This is an introductory video to the harmful algal bloom in San Francisco Bay from July through August of 2022. The video is only meant to show the spread of the harmful algal bloom and to show what the organism looks like. And it, it is possible that this harmful algal bloom will go past September of 2022. And some call it a red tide, but it's more appropriately called a harmful algal bloom. Dinoflagellates are single-celled organisms that are part of the marine environment, but they also occur in freshwater. And as plankton or phytoplankton, they're very important in um, our ecosystems. But dinoflagellates are a little bit unique because they possess a flagellum, which enables it to propel itself through the water and in this particular image it's hard to see the flagellum because heterosigma akashiwa was very difficult to uh, photograph but the literature also indicates that this particular species of heterosigma is also known to be a fish killer when it produces toxins and the environmental conditions have to be just right for the production of toxins and this may have not occurred as late of august of 22 in San Francisco Bay. This harmful algal bloom is not the first time it has shown itself in San Francisco Bay. There is an initial study from Herndon and all in 2002 where they reported Herosigma, the dinoflagellate in the current bloom, as blooming in San Francisco Bay as caused by an increase in urea in San Francisco Bay. And further studies also show other dinoflagellates by Cholaminol in 2004 of another dinoflagellate, Akashino sanguinea, that also uh, has bloomed in San Francisco Bay. So this is not the first time that a harmful algal bloom from a dinoflagellate has occurred in the waters of San Francisco Bay. But again, I'll go on to um, further describe what I have seen. And initially, I have always observed the bloom around Seaplane Lagoon in Alameda. And the weeks leading up to July 16th, I had seen it like I see most summers. But this year, around July 16th, the concentration was much higher than I had seen before. And I've never collected a sample before to try to determine what it was. But when it was such a high density, in my opinion, looking over the water, looking all chocolatey, I decided to collect a sample with my phytoplankton net after I collected my sample, I put it under the microscope and photographed it as best I could. But because I am not a specialist in these particular organisms, I was able to contact colleagues at the California Department of Public Health, which has a marine biotoxin monitoring program within their environmental management branch. And they were able to identify this as heterosigma based on my photograph on July 22nd and they also collected their own sample that same day and the subsequent day to correctly identify the dinoflagellate causing the harmful algal bloom in our bay as heterosigma. This is drone footage on July 21st in Seaplane Lagoon. Again, I see this bloom in Seaplane Lagoon every year, but it this year, the concentration was extremely dense. I had never seen it this dark before. So I came out with my drone and just flew over Seaplane Lagoon to take some footage and some aerial photographs of the color of the water. In this photograph, looking in the opposite direction of the drone footage, you could see that the water is obviously dark in color um, in Seaplane Lagoon. By August 2nd, the public was aware. In fact, on August 2nd, boaters had complained to KTVU and they ran a report on that day indicating that the water in the estuary, the Oakland estuary, was brown and KTVU contacted the uh, Regional Water Quality Board who initially thought it was a discharge of water, but they had not been in contact with the California Department of Public Health yet. And in my uh, wanderings through Alameda by August 6th, 
I had also um, noticed the, the spread of the bloom in Belena Bay within Alameda. By August 7th, it was clearly visible south of the Park Street Bridge in Alameda in the little boat tie-ups opposite of the Raley's uh, supermarket. The water had been chocolate that deep into the um, estuary. And at that point, you really didn't need a phytoplankton net to see that it was in the water. A subsequent report by KTVU had then reported that they had made contact with the Regional Water Quality Board, who said it was heterosigma, and, and I believe in communications I had with my colleagues at the California Department of Public Health, it's possible that the Water Board reach out to that um, public health laboratory. But at this point, uh, I knew that this was going to be pretty extensive and going to be ongoing for a long time. And the reason for that, as is reported by the Regional Quality Water Board, is that the, this kind of dinoflagellate will form a cyst. And cysts can survive in the environment a long time. And the literature will indicate that other diatoms, other dinoflagellates will, will do this. They'll form a cyst, and then when conditions are right, they'll repropagate so that the bloom could last months. This may be the case for this particular bloom in our bay. Moving on to August 12th, the bloom has now spread in most of the eastern parts of San Francisco Bay. A lot of people forget that Lake Merritt is connected by tidal flow to the bay, so Lake Merritt is now chocolatey and uh, the bloom will continue to spread, um, potentially moving into San Leandro Bay and other parts of the bay. In this drone video of Lake Merritt, you could see how the otherwise normal bluish greenish color of Lake Merritt is now very dark and chocolate because of the extents of the harmful algal bloom within Lake Merritt. Here, looking at Lake Merritt in the direction of the Oakland Estuary, you could see streaks of brownness and just dark color that is not normal in Lake Merritt given the density of the algal bloom. This is a slide with a date of August 18th so far. The yellow highlights indicating where there are public reports of the spread of the bloom. Definitely in most parts of the Oakland Estuary, San Leandro Bay, and Alameda near Bay Farm Island, but fishermen also report seeing it on the east side of Treasure Island. There are also reports of the bloom as far as Oyster Point and some reports of other parts near Angel Island. So it will continue the spread. The day of this video is August 28th, and it's still the same color and potentially uh, will continue to persist as I think it may. Here I demonstrate how a phytoplankton net is used. Various different kinds of net, but it's the same idea that you take your phytoplankton net and throw it into the water at different depths and pull it a number of times, anywhere from three pools to five pools to give you a good representative sample. And as water flows through the phytoplankton net, then it collects at the bottom. And because it is a fine screen mesh material, it will trap any phytoplankton. But currently during this harmful algal bloom, there's really no need to do that. You'll just take a water bottle and you'll be able to recover heterosigma. But this is a technique that people that collect phytoplankton samples for identification use to determine what it might be. And then you will take the sample that you've collected at the very bottom of the phytoplankton net and pour it into a smaller collection container and with a small pipette, take a drop of the bottom of the sampling bottle and place that on a traditional light microscope for identification photography and or video. In this video, you see heterosigma under a light microscope 
at 100 times magnification. It tumbles and moves in the water, but under light microscopy, it's still difficult to see the flagella. And all the other things you see are just artifacts under the slide. But because when it moves alive so fast, it is difficult to photograph. But it gives you an idea of how it looks like when it's in the water. In this video, I've taken hetero sigma and placed it on the dark phase at 200 times magnification. And in dark phase, because of the contrast that's possible, you are able to see the flagella. So if you look carefully when I use the fine focus, you could see the flagella. And that flagella is what causes heterosigma to propel itself through the water. I hope that this video has been helpful in trying to make you understand how heterosigma has spread as a harmful algal bloom in San Francisco Bay. I'm not going to speculate as to the multitude of reasons why this harmful algal bloom has occurred this year. But again, as I stated at the beginning, it's not the first time that heterosigma has bloomed as harmful in San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay is very dynamic. It could heal itself, but currently we're under a drought. Uh, and there isn't as much movement of the fresh water with the salt water that the bay normally sees. So again, I hope it's helpful. Uh, I am not a specialist in this group, but do have a little bit of knowledge about these organisms and hope that you've learned a little bit from it and hope that our bay will heal and that this bloom at some point will go away.